This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we enter another chapter, and this chapter is all about risk and what's referred to as the Capital Asset Pricing Model, or CAPM for short. Now, what we need to go through and consider is whenever we're making an investment, we want a return from it, don't we? But when we're looking at the return that we expect to get from that investment, we need to balance that up with the level of risk that we are faced with. Now, we've already mentioned or spoken a little bit about risk when it's come to, to raising finance in terms of the risk faced by raising debt finance, uh, the risk faced with regards to equity finance, but, but the risk here are, are separate. Okay, What we're looking at here is the total risk that we are faced with upon making an investment. Because we need to consider the risk that we are faced with when we make that investment. So if we know what the total risk is, that we are faced with, then we can make better, more informed decisions. Now, when we're looking at the total risk that we're faced with, we split that there into our business risk. So looking there at the entity and how it operates and whether or not it operates with a higher level of, say, fixed cost or a higher level of variable costs and which one of those is more risky or has there been a change in the way the company operates in terms of maybe making some acquisition uh, of another entity and therefore that will go through there and change the, the business risk as well okay so when we're looking at the risk that we're faced with we're thinking about business risk but on top of that business risk as well we also need to think as well about the finance risk so looking there at how the company is financed, fairly self-explanatory. But if we go into it in a little bit more detail, we're thinking there about the level of gearing. OK, so when you're looking at your finance risk, we're looking there at the level of gearing. And if you like, the amount of debt that is in the compared to equity, because surely if a business is more highly geared, and has more equity, sorry, pardon me, has more debt within it, then it's going to be a little bit more risky from our perspective as an equity investor, isn't it? Because those debt holders are going to get more of the profits from which we are then meant to receive our dividend. Now, if most of those profits are being consumed by the interest being paid to the debt holders, then we are at a considerable level of risk as the equity holder. And what we mentioned as well, when we're thinking there about is it your business risk, we're looking there about the company and how it performs its day-to-day -day operations. So in a simple nutshell, the level of fixed and variable cost. A business is more risky inherently if there are more fixed costs within it. Okay, uh, it, it, it links back in, into gearing, doesn't it? The more highly geared we are, the more highly risky that business is as we have to pay more interest and interest is a fixed cost uh, so therefore by a similar measure uh, if therefore we have more fixed costs uh, fixed operational costs within the business that is more risky because if the level of sales drops then that reduces the overall contribution and there is therefore less contribution to go through there and cover those fixed costs so therefore making it more risky now what we're going to go through and do there is we need to be able to measure this risk. Now, as we go through the chapter, the focus that we have, not just in the chapter, but within the syllabus, it is focusing on the level of business risk. When it comes to looking there at your finance risk, we're going to keep it there very simple. We're going to go through there and assume that the business is ungeared. Uh, so if that's the case, there is nil debt or it is a 100% equity finance business. Okay, or if you like, uh, there is going to be no change. I think that's probably a better way to go through there uh, and reflect upon it. Maybe there is no change in your gearing. But for now, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there as an ungeared entity. There is no debt within this business. Okay. So what do we need to go through and do? Let's focus on the total risk and then focus a little bit more as we proceed 
to look at your business risk because what we can do is we can start to look at what's referred to as your portfolio theory to to quantify the business risk and, and if you like the finance risk into further subsections because what we've got there is if we go through and look at the total risk faced by your investor uh, compared to the number of investments surely the more investments that we hold the more we, we diversify away our risk there's the, the old example uh, is it there of ice creams and umbrellas um, and you know if you invest in an ice cream company your, your returns are the highest in, in the hotter months of the year okay uh, but you won't make so much money will you in the winter months when it's cold uh, but in terms of the rain uh, and your investment in umbrellas, they will be needed in the winter months when it's cold and wet, whereby it's drier in the summer and therefore umbrellas aren't needed. So you've got gains and losses in each business appearing at similar times. In the summer, we have gains on our ice cream, but losses, if you like, on our umbrellas, whereby in the winter we have gains on our umbrellas and losses on our ice creams. And those gains and losses equally offset, so we get a constant periodic return. Now, what happens there is we begin to diversify our portfolio wider and wider uh, and diversify in overseas entities, uh, diverse in different types of industries. What's going to go through and happen there is that your total risk is going to go through and steadily decrease. Now, what happens there is it never decreases down to zero. OK, there is always some risk within that business. Your total risk can never, ever, ever be diversified. But what you are doing is you will get to a point whereby you have diversified away what's referred to as your specific risk. Okay, uh, so sometimes referred to that as well. as your unsystematic risk. So that's the, the particular risk that a business is faced with. Okay, so how it operates on its day-to-day -day basis in terms of fixed costs and variable costs. Maybe uh, to do with your ice creams and umbrellas, it is specifically impacted by the weather, isn't it? You can diversify that weather risk away, can't you? Uh, by holding not just investments in an ice cream company, but also investments in an umbrella producing company okay but as we said you can diversify away that specific risk but what then happens is you will always be faced still with some risk and that risk that you are left with is referred to as the market risk or also the systematic risk, or sometimes referred to as the systematic market risk, okay? And that's due to your general day-to-day -day economic factors such as interest, inflation, GDP, and the likes, okay? Those, those macroeconomic factors, because different businesses will respond to those in different ways, uh, and you are also subjected to the fact as well that, that we are investing within the stock market and that is inherently risky isn't it okay there could be if you like a reduction in the overall market value uh, because of some changes in the macroeconomic environment unemployment levels to name but one more okay now what we need to be able to go through and do then is identify how we can then measure the risk that we are faced with because if we're an investor we're not just going to hold one or two investments aren't we we're going to go through there and try and reduce our risk so that we can reduce the risk and then get a guaranteed periodic constant return okay therefore if we know the risk that we are faced with and, and, you know, if we're holding a portfolio of investments we are faced with the market risk aren't we the systematic risk you need to be conversant between the different terms because you never know which terms the examiner will throw in there it's like receivables and debtors uh, payables and creditors same things but, but different meanings okay or, or different words i should say uh, but we need to know that how to go through that and measure this systematic market risk and the way in which we go through and measure this systematic market risk the risk that we are faced with as an equity investor 
if we have a well diversified portfolio of investments, which usually from theory and research is somewhere between 50 and 20 investments. Uh, what you have then is you are then measuring that risk based upon is it your capital asset pricing model. OK, so what we need to be able to go through and do there is not only understand the risk that we are faced with. So as an investor, you are faced with the total risk, the business risk and the finance risk. And within that business risk and finance risk, there is the systematic business risk and the systematic finance risk. And also the, the specific business risk and the specific finance risk. What we're going to focus on, because it's there within the syllabus, is we're going to focus purely on the business risk. OK, and look at what happens ultimately as we move towards the end of the chapter. How do we measure the new return if there has been a change within the business risk, which has resulted due to us acquiring another entity? OK, so within the chapter, we've already looked at business valuations. This is where it is then linked in the focus being on this change in your business risk as a result of diversifying your operations. And now we have that total risk, so the total business risk. Yeah, you could talk about finance risk as well, but we'll leave that to one side. Uh, the total finance risk reduces, sorry, the total risk reduces, total business and total finance, but there we go. Uh, the total risk reduces, but we are then left with that systematic risk, which is measured via CAPM, the capital asset pricing model happy with that hope so because we're then going to go on within the next video and specifically look at the details behind capm